This video is a part of a series that helps dinghy sailors onto the path to becoming bareboat charter skippers. The entire series is contained in this playlist here. If you have any comments or feedback for us, please share them and help make the next video that much better. Enjoy! All right, apparently Ike has a magic touch. He didn't go to any of the wrong slides. I'll see if I can emulate that. So basically, Ike kind of introduced us already. There's a bunch of different options in the local area and then stuff that you can do down in the islands to kind of learn what you need to know, practice the skills, gain the knowledge. And we're just going to kind of go over the options that we like the best in this area. So the ASA Live Aboard course, it's basically like a, a bare boat charter, except that instead of you being in charge of the boat, there's an instructor slash skipper who's in charge. And instead of being on a boat with a bunch of your friends, you're on a boat with a bunch of random other students. You know, I guess you could arrange it so that some of your friends are down there too, but you're on the boat with other students who are trying to learn the same thing. It's a good experience, and you basically you spend a week. There's three ratings that you get, 101, 103, and 104. They're ASA ratings, and that is all, everything that you'll ever need. Once you've got ASA 104, that's the most qualification that you'll ever need to do a bare boat charter anywhere that I've ever been, including the, the most um, regulatory place that I've ever been and, and probably the, most place, the place with the most regulations, which apparently is Croatia in the Mediterranean. Um, anyways, there's three, there's three levels, there's three written tests, there's a bunch of skill tests along the way, but basically it's like a crash course. It's kind of like this, this, this lecture, it is basically a crash course on everything that you're supposed to know. You don't get to walk away from that knowing all of those things, but at least you've been introduced to them over a longer time period than an hour and a half lecture. Um, don't take it in the British Virgin Islands because that's the easiest place that you could do. So save that for your own first charter. I recommend that you either take it nearby. There's a Narragansett Sailing School um, is very good. I've taken some of their courses twice. They're, they're just, they do a great job. Um, there's some of the schools on the harbor, Boston Sailing Center, Boston Sailing Club, um, Boston Harbor Sailing Club, I think Courageous. But anyways, you can take it on the harbor. There's a couple of schools that will offer a live aboard course, um, which is a week long live aboard. Um, you can take it in another more challenging cruising location. One of our buddies took it in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and that's a, that's a more, much more challenging area to sail in the British Virgin Islands. So it's nice to have uh, all that kind of more advanced topics and more advanced sailing covered by the instructor as opposed to like, you know, the milk run that is the British Virgin Islands. Um, get to the bare boat level and you're done. I've never heard of a course, I've never heard of a charter company that will allow you to do more because you have the advanced coastal cruising 105 or offshore 108. I've never... I don't actually have the bare boat, I have the 103. I don't have 104 and that's never been a problem for me either. So it's... He's right they don't really pay that much attention. But the 104 will allow you to be a member of most clubs around here without taking the test, or some clubs anyway. And you basically, if you do the liveaboard course, you get the 104 anyway, so. Yeah, no, it's worth doing, um, but. Um, I would say consider the catamaran version. Um, it's just a little bit extra money to get the cat do the catamaran version of a liveaboard course. It's probably the cheapest way to try out a cruising catamaran if you decide you want to try it out later and want to charter one with your friends, there's a pretty sizable markup between a catamaran and a monohull just about anywhere you go. Um, so consider it. It's, it's worth trying, I'd say. And you get an extra, I think it's like 10, I think it's like 113 or something. You get an extra certification. May, may as well. I think it's worth it. But unless you, unless you hate catamarans and then don't worry about it. Um, I think that's everything. So, Yes. So is, is there a reason that you would recommend monohull over Um I can't say that I would recommend it, but it's definitely, um, monoholes are definitely cheaper. And for everybody here, they're probably going to be more familiar. Um, 
So I would recommend it that way. But like I said, if you're doing the course with, a, with an instructor skipper, it's a, it's, an, it's a good way to, it's an easy way to get exposed to a catamaran. So. So are the um, in US sailing and the ASA courses transferable? Like, do the no. folks care? So, so all of the charter companies will accept either, I think, but they are not, you, if you can't take one, you can't take one, you know, they don't, the, tr the credits don't transfer between well, schools. I just having the rate, like if you, if you have a U.S. sailing uh, rate, the one or four, uh, the charter rate, whether you have U.S. Uh, US or ASA. I don't know. I've, I've never seen one that doesn't have, if they accept the ASA rating, they've got the U.S. sailing rating right next to it, even in Croatia. I checked. <laughs> Yep. You live on the boat, you stay on the, you sleep on the boat, you take the tests on the boat in the morning, you do the sailing skills during the day. Um, it's basically like a mini, it's like, it's basically like a bare boat charter except you're surrounded by an instructor and other students and you have to take tests. So each course is a week and... No, no, no. All three levels are squeezed into one week. Your first day is, your first day is the basic sailing. Your, the two days later you take the test for the intermediate and then the the last day you take the test for the final level. If you, if you split it up, each course is about 24 hours. Okay. So six hours a day for four days. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. and, and, and this I guess class would run, you know, two grand, three grand? Like it depends on the school. I mean, if you if you take it nearby, it's the cheapest option. You can just drive down to the Narragansett Sailing School, take it there. Um, but they, you want, they're going to charge you U.S. dollars as opposed to EC dollars. EC, yeah, is that what I said? Eastern Caribbean dollars. Um, and plus, you have, but then you have to count in like how much the flight costs. Um, I think when I took it, it cost me about seven hundred dollars. I took it in Newport for the week. I think seven hundred dollars. It's generally they use a pretty big boat and they pack it full of students. There were like five of us, I think, and then one instructor. Which, if you Sail with us, that's not really packed, but um, if you're a bunch of strangers, <laughs> it's kind of crowded. It's about the same cost to the weekend class the parades. Oh, I'm sorry. Is it? Okay. Yeah. Can we both? Okay. Just keep trying to ask a question. What skills do you recommend you want to have during your session? So, yeah, that, uh, I cover that in a later slide, but just get, I would say, uh, you know, as far as CBI people are concerned, I would say sonar mastery. You know, be confident to you can take crew off the dock, take a sonar out when it's blowing 30, and you're gonna get the boat back just fine. That's, that's what I would call sonar mastery. I don't know if that corresponds to a rating here, but you gotta, you gotta, I would say just know that boat inside and out. Be able to sail it whenever you want, and then go, you can go on. You don't have to go that far, but you know, I. And we have specific recommendations for how to take these courses a little bit later, so I'll, we'll get into that. I, I just, I just my commentary on it, all these classes I've taken, ASA classes in some places there. I don't think they don't do a great job of teaching you how to sail. You should know how to sail. They will do a pretty good job of introducing you to systems and 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 the boat specific stuff. They'll give you some experience on the bigger boat, but you should have a pretty thorough knowledge of the raw sailing skills before you take it. We'll get the most out of it. Yeah, I agree. So you mentioned most of the BBI uh, charter locations don't care about these ratings? Um, you can, you don't need to, for the British Virgin Islands, for chartering in the British Virgin Islands and most of the Caribbean, they're not as formal. They'll have you fill out a resume but if you fill out the resume and you say you have this, you're just automatically in. So they, it's not a requirement, but it's kind of like an easy in. And there must be a check signal on some spot. Um, <laughs> the, only no. place, the only place they've ever checked rating on was in Croatia. In Croatia, they, they made copies of it and yeah. your passport. And, yeah. Oh, no, I mean like an actual check signal. Nope. nope, never done one. That's not a thing. They have your credit card. You mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing this, you set it up, they will tell you up front, this is your deductible. 
Yep. And they, they will take uh, the trash and your credit card that deductible. How long did you get it? Uh, two grand? Uh, three or four. Yep, so chartering the boat will cost you like five grand and then the deductible on top of that, if they charge you for it, is not even what it costs to charter the boat. But still, y you know, that, you know, if, if they're charging you that deductible, it probably means you sank the boat, which is not something that you want to do. Your crew is not going to have fun sinking the boat. Just saying. <laughs> You're not ready. You should think about that before you do it. You know. okay. You're not confident enough that you can get away without having to pay. Do some more classes. All right. All right. <laughs> so let's see some next questions. You're talking about the deductible. You say they actually do work for stuff to charge you for. Well, how much can you expect? Um, the most I've ever had to pay was. They always find something. No, no, they don't. Um, I've only had to pay some pay something twice, and it was three hundred dollars and two hundred dollars. All right, um, we're just gonna kind of run back. We're gonna finish the slides here, then we'll take all the rest of the questions. Um, hello again. Thank you for watching this video. If you've appreciated this content, please let us know with a thumbs up or down in the comments so that we're encouraged to make our next presentation into a video as well. These take us a little bit of production time. We had to convince some of our friends to help out, borrow some gear and rent some other gear. But if you guys find it useful, we'll, make, we'll take the time and make our next presentation into a video as well. Oh, speaking of, if you're looking for the next video in the series, it's right here. Thank you, Seagull. This is the awkward pause. I don't know what else to say. Go to the next video. Hurry up and click. It's getting weird. <laughs>